Hi, good morning, everybody, and thank you for attending another one of our 10-minute travel talks. Let's grab a coffee, sit down, and learn lots. With me today, I have Kim Lucy with Viking Cruises. She's cruised extensively all throughout her career and has lots of good insights. So we're going to look at one of the most popular itineraries for river cruising, the uh, Grand European, which starts in Amsterdam, finishes in Budapest. Kim, I know you love this itinerary as well. I do love this itinerary. This is one of our most popular itineraries for all of our clients. About 50% of our clients choose this one first. And it's a fantastic itinerary that gives you an opportunity to see the central part of Europe. Uh, 15 days, we include 12 guided tours and we visit four different countries. So what you're today and what I'm going to do is just highlight a few of the key itineraries but what I love about this itinerary is you do get these iconic cities like Amsterdam that we're looking at here but you also get some of the little medieval towns as well as the castles and the palaces and you get to try the wine and the food as you're sailing along this amazing uh, series of rivers. There are actually three different rivers the Main, the Rhine and the Danube that we travel through um, as we move along uh, this particular area. So what you're looking at here is Amsterdam. I always encourage people to come a little bit earlier and stay a little bit later, just because Amsterdam has so much to offer our clients with the incredible museums like the Rijksmuseum and the Van Gogh Museum, but also Anne Frank House, if you've read her as a, as a child, um, and you can see where she lived and where they were hidden for two years. There's great food, as well as a variety of, of amazing places to walk and explore along the canals as well. Once we leave Amsterdam, we visit um, another great port in Holland, which is called Kinderdijk. And this is a World UNESCO heritage site with 19 heritage windmills. And you can either take a bike trip if you would like, it's an optional tour, or you can, you can join our included tour, which, um, which will uh, walk you along the towpaths and give you an opportunity to peek inside these uh, uh, wonderful windmills. A lot of families still live in these windmills, so you can see how they live as well. From there, we get on to Cologne, which is one of my all-time favorite uh, oh, cities. It's isn't it beautiful? City. Isn't it gorgeous? It's, it's gorgeous. Beyond the Rhine. Yeah. And uh, you can see here where we dock, and this is one of the really great advantages of river cruising, is that we dock in the heart of the city, and you step off our guides are local, they meet us right there on the quay, and then you walk into the heart of the city. And this is um, really well known, as you know, Leslie, for this amazing um, cathedral called the Dome. And it's one of the oldest and the largest Gothic cathedrals in Europe. And an interesting story here is that during the Second World War, when they bombed extensively throughout this part of Germany, um, the, one of the bombers, uh, one of the veterans told me at a recent uh, cruise night that um, they used this cathedral as a beacon because it would poke up above the clouds and they would use it as, a, as a, a beacon so that they knew which direction to turn their bombers to get to the other cities in Germany. So it's really got a lot of history and uh, you'll get a chance to explore this as well as some of the Roman history of Cologne as well. And what a lot of other people uh, might not know, and maybe, maybe you know what the answer is to this, is what else is Cologne known for? Do you know, Leslie? Is it Cologne? <laughs> Correct, it's uh, Eau de Cologne. It's, this is where they say perfume was invented and you can still go buy the original fragrance called 4711. And then, okay. Here we also are going to travel through this beautiful central part of the Rhine Valley called the Middle Rhine. This is a World UNESCO Heritage Site as well. And I don't know if you've sailed along this, Leslie. Yes, I have. It's beautiful. Yeah. This is one of my favorite stretches of the river. And the good thing about this is we do it during the daytime hours when there are 40 castles. Mm -hmm. Our guides will talk about these various castles as we transit through this area. What you're looking at right here is the Cat's Castle, and around the corner is the Mouse Castle, and they were owned by two different families, and they used to fight with each other uh, to who, who had control of the tolls, um, uh, uh, tolls uh, collecting money from the various ships coming up and down this stretch of the river. 
So there's lots of history here. You'll enjoy this with a glass of wine as you sail through these beautiful stretches. And then we transit into Austria on this trip as well. And this is another place that I really enjoy. This is the Melk. This is the town of Melk. It's about a thousand people, but it's known for this, uh, this cathedral and this abbey, which is um, about a thousand years old. And what I really find fascinating, it was burnt down. Um, origi the original was a wooden building, it was burnt down and rebuilt in this beautiful Baroque style and it has a, an incredible view as well as a, a, an incredible uh, series of frescoes inside. But it also has a library that has manuscripts that date back almost a thousand years. They're handwritten by the monks. So it's very cool here. The other thing I love here is I like to shop for um, apricot brandy and apricot jams because the area is known for fruit growing. And it's a great place if you want to pick up um, little gifts for friends or family. I always stock up for stocking stuffers for Christmas, particularly at this time of the year, it's fun to have those little things tucked away. So that's something you do a little tasting in the town as well. And then we get to um, Vienna. I don't know about you, but this is my favorite city in all Love of it. Elegant, it's friendly. It's kind of like Paris on a smaller scale. Mm -hmm. And what we're looking at here is the Hofburg Palace. And right in front, just behind between the doors and that statue is an excavation uh, of the original Roman city. So you can look and see that it's a city built on top of another city. But the palace um, was the home of about 700 years of Austro-Hungarian emperors and empresses. And uh, they no longer live there now, but uh, you can go and visit the Lipizzan Stallions here. You can listen to the Viennese Boys Choir. And then of course, one of my favorite things to do, um, I love to go and sit in the coffee houses. And one of the, one of the great places to go is the Zahar Hotel with this famous chocolate cake that was, um, was actually created by a, a young sous chef who was suddenly put in charge of creating a last minute dessert for one of the emperors because the executive chef fell ill and it became such a, a hit that even today you can go to the Zahra Hotel and you can enjoy this at, at the hotel or you can ship it home if you wanna do something fun for family mm. friends. As I've done, I actually sent it home to my mom because her birthday was, <laughs> day was going to be in Vienna. So I ordered it online and she, re she received it the day that I was in Vienna and it was great fun. But our recipe is also on our website. So if you'd like to make it yourself, you can uh, check with Leslie and she can, Leslie, you might even want to post this. Uh, yes, good idea. But Kim, you know if you've baked this one. I actually haven't tried this one myself, but... Uh, it, it, I have tried some of the other recipes that we have on our online um, recipe yeah. hash and they're easy to make and they're fantastic. So Beautiful. I haven't tackled this one yet, but it might be on my, it might be on my uh, agenda for Christmas since I'm not traveling as much this year. Yes. So, uh, you can check that out. And then our last stop is one of my all time favorites. And my last trip, I spent about three extra days here in Budapest, and I love the city. Mm -hmm. Here, looking at the city at night from the Buda Castle, and we're looking down over the chain bridge towards the Parliament buildings, and you can see the ships docked on the on the um, opposite side of the river. That's where our Viking ships dock, and you can walk right into the center of the old part of Budapest, filled with cafes and restaurants. And of course, the Grand Market, which is another fantastic place for doing some souvenir shopping. Um, Hungary is known for paprika. So you can check. We also have a great uh, Hungarian paprikash uh, recipe. So if you want to try that out, but I always pick up the beautifully packaged uh, paprika at the market to bring home for various friends who love to cook as well. But the city has tons to see and do. You can walk and walk and walk. You can check out mm -hmm. the people. There's a, there's a museum. There's museums for everyone. And it's just, and you can also take a, a bike trip and uh, paddle through, which I've done as well. So uh, I think that gives you an idea of what we've got to offer. And uh, I am going to, I think we're right on time and I'm just gonna turn it back to you, Leslie. Well, thank you so much, Kim. I, I know that's a lot of ground to cover and you've picked up 
just some of the highlights. So much more for people to enjoy. And uh, keep in touch with me. Uh, keep reading my newsletter. There will be some Viking specials. And we're looking forward to 2021 when we can start traveling again. Thank you so much, Kim.